So we're working on chapter 11, um, looking at solutions. Um, we talked about already how in a solution, it's a homogeneous mixture, and I have a solute and I have a solvent. We're using green for solutes and blue for solvents. So we're gonna take these two solutions here and we're gonna look at them in a little bit more detail, salt water and ethanol mixed in water. So if you remember these triangles, um, they just remind us to look at everything from three perspectives. The macroscopic, what you can see, the particle, what you could build with a model, and then the symbols is the, the quick way to write it down on paper. Um, so looking at solutions, um, we wanna remember that solutions um, are always gonna be those homogeneous mixtures. And in terms of what they would look like, the, these mixtures, um, when you look at them, they don't look like a mixture. Um, we would say that they are transparent and they are consistent all the way through. So we're gonna look at two. We're gonna look at um, table salt, NaCl, dissolved in water. Um, and we're gonna look at ethanol, um, dissolved in water as well. So this would be, if I wrote it symbolically, NaCl in the aqueous phase, and this would be this ethanol here in the aqueous phase, all right? If you can think about salt water, um, salt water doesn't look like anything special. You can prank people actually. Um, been there, done that by filling their regular water glass um, and it looks just like water, but there's actually salt in there. But to the naked eye, you can't see the salt. Same thing with the ethanol. Um, ethanol mixed with water, you can't tell there's anything special about it. All you can see is my blue solvent because the, the particles, the solute is so small. Um, so I can't see the solute yet. However, um, when I go down to the particle level, um, let me sketch you first a simpler picture of this. So if I can see at a particle level, then I realize that there are actually some positive and negative ions floating around in my solvent. So I've got my solvent, but now at a particle level, I know that there's charges. Over here in the ethanol, um, there's no charges. This is a molecular compound, so it just stays as molecules when I put it into water. And I'm just going to um, say, hey, here's an ethanol without a charge on it. And then I've got lots of water surrounding it. And I could throw some water in here as well. So at a particle level, I would see charges in the sodium chloride and I would not in the ethanol. And we have words for that. Um, this is called an electrolyte solution. And this ethanol would be called a non-electrolyte. Electrolyte means I have mobile charges, mobile ions dissolved, and a non-electrolyte does not have those mobile ions. This will conduct electricity, this will not. So those are a couple more solution terms for us. So if I can take these pictures and look a little bit more at molecules, here's what's happening. So here is my green solute, right? My NaCl is my solute, my ethanol is my solute here. So here's my solute and then the water particles come in and start to pull that solute apart. So here's a chlorine that got pulled out and here's a sodium that got pulled out. And those get pulled out actually by the solvent molecules, which are in blue here. So the solvent comes along and starts to pull those ions out. And we'll see a little bit more um, of that in our symbolic notation. So waters pull the ions out. If I can write this in a couple different ways, um, it's good to know kind of what your synonyms are. So I could write NaCl aqueous. Um, if you remember back to chapter five, aqueous told me that I could also split this up into ions, right? So aqueous sodium ions, aqueous chloride ions. And then if I could take this picture and write it as symbols, I could take my sodium ion and I could say, hey, that sodium ion is going to be attracted to the oxygen in water. Remember this oxygen would have a partial negative charge. And so what I'm looking at here is an intermolecular force from chapter 10, um, IMFs. And specifically, can you recognize what this is when I have an ion? Can you remember what intermolecular force it was? This was an ion dipole attraction. And so what I have holding all these sodiums to the water, I have little intermolecular forces or little temporary attractions holding those together. And then likewise, I could also draw a chloride ion and that would be attracted to the hydrogens because those have a partial 
um, positive charge on them. So opposites attract, right? So we're looking at um, things from net ionic equations here. We're looking at chapter 10, intermolecular forces, and it all is coming together with our salt dissolving in water. So let's just take a quick look over here at the ethanol, um, same type of picture. So when you first pour ethanol onto water, um, it will actually stay as a separate layer. Um, but then if you shake it up a little bit, give it a little bit of kinetic energy, it will turn into a picture that looks like this. And these black molecules, these black globs are your carbon um, in your ethanol. So you've got the solute now dispersed evenly, homogeneously throughout that um, solvent which would be spread around all throughout there. Um, if I want to write this symbolically, this is a molecular compound again. Um, so here's the formula for ethanol. It's written a bit strange, not super condensed because we want to communicate a little bit about the structure there. So I would say this is aqueous and I can't break it into ions at all. So there's no breaking it into ions. That's because it's a non-electrolyte. Um, if I wanted to look at this and say, why does it mix with water? Well, the OH looks a lot like the OH in water, right? And so here's what's going to happen. If a water comes nearby, this H, which has a partial positive, will be attracted to the partial negative on oxygen. If you remember, OH and NH and FH are what we look for for those intermolecular forces. Um, and so right here I have um, what kind of intermolecular force? Hydrogen bonding. And remember, hydrogen bonding isn't really a bond. It's not as strong as a bond. It's just an intermolecular force attraction. But that's a strong enough attraction that it allows the ethanols and the waters to mix. So they have enough in common that they'll go mix with each other. Um, same here, we have enough in common that we'll go mix. So um, that gives us a little bit of macro, particle, and symbolic communication about our solutions.